Hello everyone. This is the 13th part of our course operating system in C language in the environment Linux. This week we will be covering uh, the topic of semaphores. So actually we will be performing synchronization through semaphores. Now what is synchronization? Synchronization allows two or more processes or threads to communicate in a useful way. Or in simpler words, you can also say to synchronize the flow of two or more processes uh, so that they can work better. And to understand synchronization better or to answer the question that why is synchronization necessary, let's see an example from real world scenario. Now look at this image carefully and you can see there are two roads in the image. Also, uh, there is a common section in between them. So if the traffic on this road has to travel, it must use this common section. Also, on the other hand, if the traffic on the other road, this one, this road, has to travel, has to move, it also needs to use this common section. Now imagine what will happen if we don't have this, this uh, traffic signal. If there is no traffic signal here, what will happen if both uh, the cars or, or this bus in this car or, or the traffic on the both roads uh, starts to use this common section at the same time, what will happen? And the answer to that is obviously an accident will happen if the traffic from both the roads attempts to use this common section at the same time. So now let's see this whole scenario in the terms of operating system. So actually this common section right here is the critical section and these this car, this car and this bus, these two vehicles are the processes which are trying to use this common section at the same time. So what is a critical section? Critical section is a resource that two or more processes tries to use at the same time. And we need a mechanism to use this critical section safely. Or you can also say to achieve mutual exclusion so that we have to make sure that two or more than two processes do not attempt to use this critical section at the same time. So we have to make sure that only one process can access this critical section at one time. So let's see what are the mechanisms to um, use this critical section safely or you can also say to achieve mutual exclusion. Let's see them. So there are many mechanisms which are used to uh, use the critical section safely or to achieve mutual exclusion, few of which you can see here, but all of them have one or another issue. And the main issue is of busy waiting. So first of all, let's see what is busy waiting. So imagine there is a process. Uh, first of all, imagine there is a resource here. This is our critical section and a process. Let's say P1 came and this uh, critical section was empty. So it started using it. After some time, another process P2 came and it what it did is it prompt this uh, uh, critical section or the process P1 to use the critical section. And since this critical section was busy, so what happened is process P1 signaled it that I'm busy. So it said that it is busy. When it will signal that I'm busy, process P2 will go on waiting. So it will go to a waiting state. And what will happen is after some time, it will again prop the process P1 to use this critical section. And P1 will again say that it is busy. So this cycle will continue. P2 will again and again ask for P1 for the critical section and P1 will tell it again and again that it's busy. So this cycle, this infinite cycle of busy waiting will continue and they, they both will be stuck in the busy waiting loop. So this actually uh, wastes CPU cycle and you don't want that. And to avoid it, we will be using semaphores. So to avoid busy waiting, to avoid this infinite loop, we will use semaphore. Now let's see what is a semaphore. Semaphore is a synchronization tool that does not require busy waiting. Actually, it is an integer variable. So in simpler words, now let's see what is a semaphore. Semaphore is a synchronization tool that does not require busy waiting. It is actually an integer variable. Actually, semaphore consists of two things. 
The first thing is an integer variable. The other thing is a queue. So the value of this integer variable is non-negative. And the, initially, this queue is empty. This will actually be a queue of processes, and we will come to it in a few minutes. Now, as we know that semaphore is an integer variable, and since we just said its value is non-negative, what we actually do is we perform synchronization on the basis of the value of this variable. We actually decide whether or not a process can use the critical section based on the value of this integer variable. So that means the value of this integer variable can be modified, can be changed, and um, we cannot just change it by just writing s equals to you know some value. We can't do that. So to modify the value of this variable, we have two standard functions. Let's see what are they. These two standard functions are weight and signal. So semaphores can only be accessed through these functions. The value of semaphore can be modified only using this weight function or the signal function. Now let's see how are these functions actually used. So the, uh, what is the structure of a process which is using a critical section? So the structure is like this. Whenever you have to use a critical section, we enclose this critical section between the weight function and the signal function. So we always call the weight function before using the critical section. And then after using the critical section, after getting done with it, we call the function signal. So whichever process uses the critical section, always call weight before it and then calls signal uh, function after it. So this is the basic structure and you must follow it. Every process that is using the critical section must follow this structure. Now let's go into a little bit more detail of these two functions, weight and signal, and let's see what happens inside them. What is their algorithm?